In the last video, I showed you the new water bottling facility. And in today's video, I want to take you through the steps and how my brain thinks on when it comes to building factory layouts. And in total, this factory produces 53.5 oscillators. So let's get to it. And the first thing I want to do is I want to get this 750 copper wire right here and this wire right here, and we're going to make cable. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this foundation. I'm just going to take this up to about this height right there delete these bottom ones and then i'm just going to extend this and bury these constructors i don't know how much as of yet but we're just going to make it along three lines like this um and then what i want to do is i want to put that just down here as well just so i know I, I, at least i would know i've got enough foundations so once i've got the foundation down we're going to have a look at the cable recipe and you can see 60 wire per minute is needed so if we do with the maths 750 which is one line of copper wire divided by 60 is going to be 12.5 machines so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to get a constructor now is i'm going to place this down uh here like this with the input on this side and then i'm going to place that there and then we're going to build 12.5 i'm going to do exactly 12 to be honest so 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 and then this end one because we need 12.5 i'm going to set it to cable and then overclock it to make sure that it does an extra 50 percent so this is going to be 150 percent clock speed so that's going to make 45 per minute and then what we're going to do as well is we're going to just duplicate this onto this side and make the input on this side like that and then go down the same line so we're just going to do two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve just like that and then again with this back end one here i'm just going to copy this so i'm just going to copy that and paste that there so this one now is 150 percent because as we know wait did that change no uh 750 is going into 12.5 machines which is this right here and then for the input side we're going to put down a lift right here we're going to get our conveyor hall and we're just going to put you there I'm going to put one U there. But what I want to do first, I want to do the outputs. And the reason we're going to do the outputs first is just because of how Satisfactory works and how stacking works in Satisfactory. Because if we grab ourselves a merger, we're going to bring this up like here. So we're going to line it up with the, out, uh, with the input. And we're just going to take this up by four, like that. And then we're going to do this all the way along and making sure I'm sending this. And the reason I'm doing this, and I'm going to quickly show you. So we're going to remove that. And then we're going to grab ourselves a... Actually, no, we don't need two. We can actually merge these together. Yeah. So scrap what I've just said. But grab yourself a merger and put it directly in the middle this time. Because we're, we're going to be bring, coming down to 750 in total cable. So delete them three. And then we go to the top. We grab ourselves a lift. So we're just going to need a Mark 1 because it's only sending out 30 cables. And we're just going to do that right there. Actually, that might be a little bit too low. It needs to be that one. And we're just going to grab you to go across there like that. And then we're just going to do that all the way along. Technically, I could make this a little smaller. And I think I might do. I can make it a little bit more compact. And all I'll need to do is just grab the self for foundation, put this vertically up to there, bring this merger down by one, because we can't do it with the mergers itself because it'll it will uh, stack through the other stack, right? And then we can bring this one down, grab ourselves a Mark 1 and put that to there, then bring our Mark 1 belt just across the top and it's a lot more compact. So we're actually going to do that. So we're going to remove this floor in here. We're going to add this floor like this and we're just going to zoop this all the way down there. And then we're just going to put this in every center of the foundations that we're building and making sure the output is going down that way. So we put this into the center of this one and so on and so forth. And then I'm going to put Mark 1 lifts on the outside and then bring all these belts to the middle until it's completed. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the flooring from underneath them just like this. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab some stackable conveyor poles and place them just here like this. So it gives it some form of support. But then I'm going to remove the bottom one, then grab myself a splitter. And we're just going to place this right here like this and making sure the input is on the right hand side this way because this is where the lifts are coming up with the 750 wire and then we're just going to put splitters all the way down here and just make this a manifold just like we normally do and then you're just going to want to put a mark 5 belt going down the line and then put splitters going all on the inputs and then just make sure you connect the belts up and then this eventually once i put another one here as well as you can see it's going to look like you know this is supported it kind of looks like a, a, a mini penis but that's fine it works. 
And then after you complete that, turn everything on and just make sure everything's running. And as you can see, it is. And as you know, or for those that don't know, I like to stress test all my uh, builds before I move on to the next section where these items are going to go. And the reason I call it stress testing for those that don't know is just because I like to make sure that the machines are running optimally. I've made sure I've connected every belt because you don't want to build everything and then go ahead here with the assemblers and then the manufacturers and then so on and so forth, only to find out you've miscalculated something at the very start of this, which is going to affect your mathematics throughout the whole entire build. So every time you build a specific section or part of your factory, I recommend, or even just an item, just stress test it. Put it into a sink, let it run its thing. Yeah, you're gonna get a couple of coupons extra for it. And if you wanted to, just to make them quick items, you can even put it into a storage container and then smart split it into a storage. Uh, but the reason I don't do that is because then I'm obviously going to have to move the storage container. There's a lot of items I need to move around and all that crap. But yeah, it does seem like everything is working. And obviously, I've already stress tested this on the live stream. So I know this does work. And, you know, it goes through with the copper over as, as well. The wa water's all running uh, perfectly as well. And you might notice that there are gaps in the empty canisters. And the reason that is, is because I want to be sending more water than I want to be, just to be on the safe side, especially with this new system I'm running with the water bottles transporting from one area to another. But also, I want to apologize because I got highly distracted by the train crash last episode when I was describing uh, some of your guys' comments on why are you not picking up the water when it's right there that you need to take it to instead of transporting it all the way from over there. One, because I want to make as much trains as I can on the system. And two, honestly, I don't want to. Because I want to, you know, I played this game so many times. This is probably my 15th to 20th playthrough. And I'm I'm always going with a water extractor to a pipe to a machine. And I I've never tried to do as many factories as I can that requires water to be transported from one dedicated location. Hence why the last couple of videos have been highly focused on the water bottling plant, because that is going to be my little pride and joy for this playthrough. And one, it's going to get extremely massive, especially if we want to power a full nuclear plant with bottled water. But just imagine the satisfaction of all the trains that are set up, everything's running optimally, and you know you're distributing that via you're a train network. Like, yes, we are going to come across problems, but that's expected. And then you guys can learn from my, you know, errors, and then you can possibly take that into your own factories. So TLDR, I don't want to, and I want to make sure I can push myself as a satisfactory player and just try a little bit something different. Because like I've said, I've done this game so many times, and it's very easy just to go to a water plant, to a pipe, to a machine. So let's just spice it up a little bit and create something a little bit more mega so now that i know this is all running what i'm going to do is i'm going to start removing this get rid of the stress testing let the machines fill up where needed oh and we don't need this and we don't need that wow and my inventory is full that's a change five cables really so the next plan that we need to kind of work towards is i'm going to start putting the assemblers down because one we're going to need 40 assemblers because the reason being is we are going to need a well let's put a manufacturer down because i did describe this in the last episode i'm not going to do all the maths again because you would have seen it in the last video but if you didn't if you forgot i'll put a tag up in the top right corner now which will start uh, that section of the video so we are going to be aiming for um crystal oscillators with a standard recipe and as you can see it requires quartz crystals cable and reinforced plates it eventually we're going to be making, uh, I know I'm making a lot of quartz crystals, so the only thing that's limiting us on this here to make the crystal oscillators is actually the cables itself, because we're only limited to 750, because that's what we're making in total from this thing that we just built here, right? So what we want to do now is just see how many reinforced plates we're going to be making. And if we go into here, we're going to be using the stitched iron plates, and we're going to be uh, we're going to be utilizing 1,500 wire, which is from these two outputs right here, because 750 and 750. So if we do the maths, which is going to be uh, 1,500, so it's going to be 1,500 uh, divided by I forgot what the number was, <laughs> 37.5. Of course, I forgot. Which is going to be. 37.5 and that's going to require 40 assemblers which i think i already said and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to put them into i think four lines of 10 probably from this location here going that way 
So that's what I went and did. And yes, you must be surprised. Bits is using a hover bike. Oh my God, somebody take a picture. Yes, I'm using a hover bike. <laughs> so as you can see, I have two lines coming in right here, which is 750, which 750 is going down to these uh, 20 assemblers. And this, the other 750 is going down to them at 20 assemblers. So right now, I'm just pushing down the copper down the line so they can kind of feed what they need to be, well, fed what they need to be fed, I should say. And as I said, we're using this stitched iron plate. So all we need to do now is start bringing in the iron plates. And to be honest, with the location we're in, well, there's quite a bit of iron around us. But for those that don't know, let's just put a radio tower down, connect that up with power, and if we can see on the radar now, once I activate everything again, because where is it all? Bada bing, bada bosh. We want to make sure we can see all of that. Um, so we're here right now, and we can see there is quite a bit of iron around us, especially in this location right here. Six, to be exact, and I think they're all normal. Um, so it's a, it's a large chunk of iron, but I don't want to consume them all because I have plans for the future for those that know, I like to build my Titan builds. And you guys will get to see that because this season will not be ending until 1.0 drops. So we've got a lot of things to do and we've not even started or anywhere near close working on the main factory itself where I'll be bringing all uh, items from outside into one big large factory. And I'm still not decided because the aluminium plant was going to be the start of it. But then I'm like, eh, I don't like the design of it. I don't like how it looks. I don't like how it's optimized. So eventually it's going to get deleted. And then I'm going to start something new. Because we're satisfactory, my rule of thumb, if you don't like it, delete it. Start again on that said project. And eventually we will do that in this playthrough as well. Right, so what we want to be doing now is we want to be looking at um, the iron. So if we have 40 uh, assemblers right here, we are going to need 40 times 18.75. So if we do uh, 40... Uh, times by 18.75 is going to be 750 iron plates, which is not a bad number. So what we're going to do is we're going to put the uh, refineries down this line, and I think I'm going to put the constructors down in front of it as well. We're going to keep, keep everything kind of compact in this one big machine kind of place here. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab ourselves a constructor. We're just going to go into here, go to the iron plates, and we know iron plates produce 20 per minute. So if we need 750, we're just going to do 750 divided by 20. It should be 37.5. So 37.5 constructors we need. That means we're going to need 37, well, 37.5, 37 37.5 uh, times by 30 is going to be 1,125 ingots. And for 1,125 ingots, we're going to need to pull out our refinery and we're going to put you down and then we're going to go into here you're producing 65 so that means we're going to be doing uh one 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 uh two five divided by 65 is going to be 17.3 refineries so we're going to put that down there we're going to connect that up with the water which as you know we've got the additional water here which i do have a line here because i did think ahead and we are going to be using the pure ingot but i've also put the storage down for the, uh, obviously, the copper and stuff down here. It's nothing special. It just comes in and goes out, really. Right, so as you can see, I've done what I just stated to do. It's very simple setup, very manifold, and just very me on how I built these. You can see I put down the refineries. This end one is overclocked to um, produce the additional, like, 40% that we needed. Uh, and then you can see the ingots are coming down here. We've maximized this line here, and then the, any additional ones are going onto this separate line, which are going onto that outside constructor line there as well. Uh, these are all producing the plates and i've just run i'm just running the stress test right now just kind of leaving that for about half an hour um because as you can see i did power all this up and left all the machines kind of filling up hence the reason these belts are filling right now uh well this belt is full um because the machines were full so they're kind of just spitting everything out right now and just kind of it's all being bottlenecked here but that'll eventually sort itself out once the uh plates from the machines get emptied onto the lines and then sank again uh, but everything it's uh it seems to be running so far but i'll get back to you uh, if there is any problems and all that kind of good stuff. So now that we've got that, my next plan of action is to actually take these plates and add it into these assemblers here to go with the uh, wire. So I think what my plan of action is, I've already put something down here just to kind of um, get a bearing of what I would like to do. And I'm just going to take this along here, but I'm going to show you a nice little trick which I don't think you knew about or you might know about, which is called something, well, something I call stubby lifts. I'm going to call it stubby lifts, it's like a stubby toe. <laughs> 
<laughs> you might have seen me do it in other videos. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how we do it now. And as you know, lifts uh, have a three space height, right? But we can actually make it smaller by doing a little simple trick that looks like, well, it's kind of like a glitch, but it works pretty well. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab myself a foundation here and I'm going to take this to about, uh, I think that's right there, maybe. Uh, I'm just going to put that across there as well. I'm going to remove these ones because I don't want to see items moving through the foundation. And we're just going to grab ourselves a splitter, which I'm just going to grab myself this one. I'm just going to put this here just like this. And we want to make sure the output is facing that. Well, if I lined it up correctly, bitsy bob, grab yourself a splitter. I'm going to place that there. Uh, and what we're going to be doing, we can actually connect this up. So I'm just going to remove this real quick. I'm just going to grab ourselves a lift. And what you're going to notice is what we want to do is we want to go from here or here. And you can see the lift, how it does that weird snapping. But the reason I don't want to do it from the assembler is because it gets pushed out from the assembler onto that belt. But if we go from here and take it down, you can see it does a stubby lift. And this is why I call it that. This kind of thing does happen, but it's it's fine. Normally, this doesn't happen. In some cases, it might. But it keeps things nice and clean. And yes, it does work fine. It works normally. There's no problems with it. And I'm thinking about doing this all the way along. But also what I'm thinking about doing is maybe I've put these assemblers down, but I'm thinking about maybe like making a um, kind of like making them underground kind of, but like kind of maybe protruding out, if that makes sense. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these along here and then I might grab some half foundations, maybe just, where am I going? I need to go here, here to here, and then filling this in here like this and taking this along, maybe, I don't know yet, I've still not made my mind up, uh, but they, obviously these will get covered via decoration and stuff, but as of right now, I'm just going to leave it like that and then I'll see what I'm going to do. So I'm going to actually take a, I think I'm going to need a lift, aren't I? So if I put that there, I'm going to need a conveyor hole here with a splitter there with a Mark V lift going into that, with a Mark V lift coming out of it, which is going to face... Oh, you're a bit too low. Maybe that was my problem. Maybe I need to take all this up by one, which will actually eliminate these from being there. So let's do that. See? All of us make mistakes and you've all got a trial and error. So we're going to bring this up by one now. Place that there. Remove that one. Remove all of these that I've just placed and then take it up to this level. So we're going to zoop that whoop, along there. And like I said, this is a building episode. It's not like your normal typical pop. This is what this is being booped in or popped in or whatever you want to call it. I did say this was going to be a part two of the next of the previous building. So we're going to be doing a lot more focusing on building and just my brain, uh, how it works throughout these builds. So now I need a splitter. So we're just going to put this down here. And then uh, we're just going to put you into there, which should now allow me for you to fit perfectly. That is correct. And we're going to bring this all the way down here. I'm going to take this to here like this. Make sure you're connected there. Push you back by two. And then we're just going to bring you out here and prepare uh, that to be hooked onto that once I know this is all running fine. Um, and then I'm just going to do the same all the way along here. So I'm going to get myself myself a splitter. I'm going to put you to there like that. And I'm going to get myself a lift. I'm going to go from you, go from you to you. And that's actually made it basically normal height. So I guess we can kind of run it that way. Maybe, 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 maybe. Okay, so after playing around with it a little bit, this is what I kind of come up with. And it's just basically the same as what I had before. I just brought this a little further this way, and this kind of comes to the edge. Uh, and I've kind of started working on this like footpath here where I would like to maybe walk as a player. Um, and then created this kind of like section here. So as you can see, I have connected the plates up now. The plates was running uh, pretty decently. Um, right now, there's just a lot of machines that are currently turned off because one, the plates are backed up inside the machine uh, and the manifolds are currently running. All the re uh, reinforced plates are being stress tested now in the sink over there. So everything is being pushed through. So we're just kind of just testing it and just seeing how it runs. Uh, but yeah, I've kind of done this like kind of thing here and I've been wondering what kind of colors to go with. And I'm thinking, I'm thinking maybe like a very like dark blue, maybe. Um, so I'm thinking about going like on this line, but down here somewhere. You know what I mean? So let's just kind of, give this a try and just see how this looks. No, it's, I want it darker. So let's bring that down here, maybe further. So about there, put that in there and then select that color instead. Yeah, I kind of like that color, like a midnight blue kind of. I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to run this all, like, all the way along even these bollards as well, like this. Um, but yeah, this seems to be running fine. And as you can see, uh, I have actually put this pillar through here. So 
obviously you can't see the movement and everything. Um, but it's working pretty well. I'm kind of liking it so far. Uh, I'm just kind of playing around with it. The plates are obviously coming in from, from the same place. And as you can tell, I have done this right here. Um, you might have noticed as well, I've kind of like created like a daisy chain with the machines. And it's very, very simple to do. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly show you how to do it. Uh, for those that don't know, it's a very, very uh, simple trick. Uh, and all you need to do is you put down your assemblers where you need to put them. And then you put them side by side if you wanted to. Uh, let me... F I can't fly here right now, can I? Because I've got no bloody power. Uh, you just grab yourself a wall. Especially if they're in the middle of your foundation like this. Makes it a lot easier. Uh, but you just take that across there like this. And then you just grab yourself the power. Uh, connect the node up to the wall like this. And then connect them two together. And then just remove the wall. Simple as that. Bob is your uncle. And then you just kind of work on. So it kind of creates, you know, a little bit unique power lines. And kind of keeps them hidden away as well. Because sometimes power lines can be, you know, a bane of your life. Especially in a very busy factory. Um... So yeah, like I said, I've kind of kept these as like walkways and I've kind of set these all the way up along here as well. Keeps a bit of uh, organization. Uh, and then for the output side of things, it's just a matter of all them have merges on the, uh, they're on the opposite side of this. But merges like this, uh, so that's an assembler, assembler merging into this uh, one together from either side. And then that uh, is duplicated over here. And then these two lines are merging together into this one line here. And we're going to be making 225 reinforced plates per minute with this setup. So it's not a bad number, to be honest. So it's starting to kind of look a little busy, which is, I don't mind because I like busy looking factories. Uh, and I am going to start doing some uh, like walkways and just kind of playing around with stuff. Like, as you can see right here, I've added this. So what I'm going to look at doing is I'm going to go into my uh, walkways and I'm going to add in just some walkways just for me as a player uh, to walk around so we're just gonna do stuff like this and take it that way uh, and so on and so forth and then bring this down over here i think that's gonna need a double ramp um double ramp like this yeah and then take it down here and now come to think of it we don't actually need this we could actually remove this and then create our uh, another walkway a catwalk here and take it along here um but what i looked at doing was this here so as you know this is the copper ingots and this under here is uh is in between the machines and i'm thinking about making like an electrical corridor kind of that makes sense you see like how this is it looks like a place where you know you put your hazard signs you put on your hard hat and your high vis vest and all that kind of stuff uh, and this is just the back of the constructors clipping through here and it kind of creates it as you know an electrical outlet kind of area so you know warning and all that kind of stuff and then yeah it kind of works ish um i don't know if it's final yet but it's something i've got in mind and just kind of playing around with and then yeah with these walkways they can just carry on co continue going that way and then continue going that way and you know just kind of play around with it i think the walkways are going to stay orange but with everything else i'm actually going to make it blue so and for those that don't know you can actually do this with this you know how you can do the mass select dismantle tool so if i only want to remove the foundation i hold the hotkey which is in the settings so for those that don't know i do get asked this a lot on the live streams um so if you go into options and then go into keybinds and then look for toggle specified multi-select dismantle i've set this to my equals key which is my mouse button uh, and then when i press that and hold control whilst i'm dismantling it'll only select any other foundations that are the one meter foundation so if i wiggle around now as you can see i am mass dismantling but it's only selecting the one meter the, uh, the one meter foundations and it'll delete all them that also works for coloring so if you actually get a color swatch and then aim at the thing you want to paint so for example let's just go with the um the barriers here we're going to hold the same keybind hold control and then paint so as you can see it highlights it so it looks like it's painting but it doesn't and i can just wiggle like this and just paint everything like this and just makes it a lot easier for yourself so yeah if you didn't know that it wasn't one of my tips and tricks video uh, and all that good stuff yeah so that's a nice little tip for you in this one so now that all this is being done we now need to look at the manufacturers and i think i'm going to do this in a separate building i think so if this is going to be in one building maybe maybe the manufacturers are going to be going in this way and i'm going to like i said at the beginning of the video i'm going to need 53.5 because i always i already did all the maths in the previous video and we kind of come up with that assumption as well 
So, if we're going to be putting 53.5 down, we're going to put 54 manufacturers down, I guess. Um, and we'll do five lines of 10 and one line of four. Um, and then just kind of start distributing everything there. Because now we need to start bringing the quartz into this area, the reinforced plates into this area, and the cables into this area, which will go into all these manufacturers to make the crystal oscillators. So let's eliminate this because I'm pretty confident my reinforced plates is, are, are okay. Um, and I'm just going to start extending the foundation out now. Uh, I'm just going to start putting it down this way. This this video is going to be quite long, by the way, um, because it is a build video. It's not like your typical popping it in, that kind of thing, um, like I said before. So we're going to put all of this down just like this. And then also delete the trees that are clipping through my foundation because, one, well, we don't want that. And true, we won't be able to put down any bloody machines because the trees hitbox are going to push them away. But then what I also want to look at is an underflooring for these quartz and... By the, w the way these are like coming out here, I'm going to eliminate these lines from here and I'm just going to grab myself a foundation. I'm going to change these to uh, one meters and I'm just going to zoop this across here, I think. So it comes up underneath here and it's going to create a, what is that? A seven meter gap underneath. So if I was to extend this foundation out here like this, you know, we're going to give ourselves some underflooring and then where the manufacturers are going to go, we're going to, you know, put the quartz underneath that. Because one thing I don't like with manufacturers um, is I don't like having stacks of splitters outside of it so if we get one i don't like putting you know a splitter here and then a splitter here because we've got more stuff coming this way and then a splitter three high because we've got more that that way and then we've got a splitter four high you know what i mean I, i'm not a big fan of that it's the easiest thing to do but i'm just i just don't like the look of it i don't mind doing two which is i think is what we're going to do so we're going to do a splitter here and the splitter here well a splitter above there and then taking that in but for this one this is going to be a quartz going into the third one uh, and for me to start placing these down i do want to kind of start extending uh, to the like near enough to the front of this building over here i think so if we take all this all the way down here because this is gonna be kind of the front of the building right and then we're just gonna kind of extend this along here with more foundations and then once i've done that i'm gonna start looking at where i want to put my manufacturers so let's quickly grab one and as we know the outside line here is more than likely going to be for outside decorational purposes and then this line here is going to be more probably for my walkways. And then that allows me to say that this one right here is going to be where I'm going to be placing it. I'm, I'm always going to make sure these manufacturers are in the middle. It's the best bit of advice I can give you with manufacturers because if you want to keep things nice and clean in your factories, making sure that these is that center line here is in the line of a foundation or in the half of a foundation. Uh, so then you know if you are going to be doing some underflooring or some splitters, you know the splitter can go into that cube there in here and so on and so forth you catch my drift you know um so with this right here what i don't want to do is i don't want to go to the side of this now or hold control and put multiple of these ones down because of that rule i just said a minute ago it's going to create some separation like this and i don't i'm not a big fan of it and with man manufacturers you're going to have a lot of belts coming your way so it's always good to have a bit of accessibility around your manufacturers so what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a gap uh just as a, a foundation gap here just in case i want to divert any you know lines that way in the future because who knows where things are going to lead us same with the outputs. I might even send the outputs that way. Uh, or I might even put a storage container in here because I think we can actually fit one in there. We can. So if I did want to, you know, take my input of my uh, crystal oscillators along here to then put a merger there on the outside of all of these, I can then just kind of put them into their own containers uh, if I wanted to and something like that. Yeah, so I'm going to put all of these down and then I'm going to start working on all the belt work and I'll go through with you how I did it. And there we go. That's all that the manufacturers down. And yes, again, I'm stress testing the oscillators. Uh, um, so as I said before, I've got uh, five lines of 10 going down here just like this. And then also, as I stated, I was going to bring two lines in, which are the reinforced uh, plates and cables, which are from all, uh, above. And then the quartz are all underneath, which are getting fed via lifts. And to be honest, it's a very simple set. It's a very simple setup. It's just like like I do when you know most of my, the builds is just straight lines, manifolds, making sure everything's kind of working. And then once I do that, I can start looking into decorational purposes. But I also started um, kind of like finalizing this like walkway here. And you can kind of see what I've done just by creating the, the walkways above. But also you can probably tell as well, I've also done the colors of the assemblers and like the barriers and all that kind of stuff as well. Just to create a little bit of contrast. Because if I left all these machines, what they were as the natural orange, which I've set... It kind of looks a little crazy on the eyes, but having that darkness behind the orange, I think it works pretty well. But yeah, right now we are stress testing this and we are making the crystal oscillators at 53.5 
per minute, which all lines merge into this here, right here. So we've got it all merges into one, goes into a splitter. It then prioritizes to go forward into this storage container. And then once that's full and backs up, the overflow will go into the sink. And I think that's going to conclude this video because the next video I want to do is it's going to be another build one, very similar to this, very descriptive and just very focused on the building side of things. But next time it's going to be on how I design the buildings. We'll be adding lights and we'll be making some roof structures, some pillars and just some decorative things and just see how it looks. And we're going to science an experiment with all of that. So yeah, if you've enjoyed these videos, remember to subscribe, like, and also leave a comment even if it's just an emoji. And like I said, next time, it's going to be highly focused on designing the structure itself. So thank you so much for watching. And as always, keep bloody smiling.